I have an iPad Air 2 here uh, that I'm going to change the charge port on. As you can see, this charge port is physically damaged. Uh, it's got inside the charge port is all jacked up, so we're going to take this sucker off and uh, put a new one on. We'll put a little flux on here and uh, I'm actually going to use some flux and then um, get some low melt solder paste and use some heat to uh, get it off. But uh, first, I'm going to put a little Kapton tape over the plastic connectors here so that they don't burn up. I'm actually narrating over this video because I forgot to turn my uh, mic on for the first part of it. So right here, I try to just use heat to get it off, but uh, decided that it's probably better if I use a low melt to get it off. It'll be a little bit easier to get off. I don't want to ripping pads. You know, that's really the biggest danger is ripping pads, which you really don't want to do. So I have my heat gun set at 380 degrees Celsius uh, with an airflow of 10. So I'm using, I haven't put the low melt on yet, and I'm just trying to heat it, and it's just taking a little while, so you don't really want to force anything here. At some point, I'm going to put some low melt on right here. There you go, a little flux first. I am using Mechanic. Let's see, it's lead free uh, tin bismuth. It's 42 tin 58 bismuth uh, solder paste. So I'm just going to lightly brush it over uh, the connector here. Mix it in with the with the lead free uh, solder. So what essentially what it does is it lowers the melting point of the lead-free solder that, that was already on there. And it's going to make it a little bit easier to remove, as you'll see in a second here. So you can see it's already uh, sh nice and shiny, so that means it's already the melting point has already been reached. So just don't, you really don't want to like pull on it. You want to wait for the, wait till you can get visual on the solder. Um, make sure it's liquid. Once it's liquid, then you can you can start lifting a little bit. As you can see, the connector comes off pretty cleanly with uh, very little effort. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. It's going to be 99% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you can use 91%, but understand that uh, I believe it's 9% distilled water if you're going to do that. Is that right? I think that's right. I think it's... Uh, the rest of it's distilled water, so 99% um, will dr pretty much dry up completely. I'm not sure if I cleaned it up or not. Anyways, put a little flux on it, and now get some solder wick and uh, wick away the the tin bismuth and uh, lead-free mix. You want to go pretty quick on this. Um, you don't, again, you don't really want to pull any pads. Okay, you don't want to go slow. You want to make sure your iron's hot, hot enough. If it's if it's sticking, then uh, you probably have cheap wick or not enough flux, or your uh, iron's not hot enough. So now I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol to clean this up. Get away all the flux.
Clean it up here. Pretty good. As much as possible. And now I have my new charge port here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna tin the pads, uh, and I'll make it adhere a little easier. Cause essentially the new connector there's a hole in in, in the top or bottom of the connector of the pad. I mean, and uh, solder is able to flow through the hole uh, to connect the pad on the top to the to the pad on the logic board. So that's kind of how it makes a connection. So get a little flux, get a little 6337 Kester uh, solder. I think the gauge that I use is like 0 .0. This one is 0 .03 inches or something like that. I think that's the diameter of the solder wire that I use. You can use a smaller one, but it gets a little annoying. To me it does. So you really just want to brush a little bit of solder on there. You don't want to cake it. All right, You want just enough so that you can... Uh, get the solder to flow from the top from the bottom to the top so right here you wanna there's a clear plastic on the ends of, of this connector you wanna make sure that the square you can see the square perfectly through the clear plastic so that that kind of aligns it that's that's the only purpose of that clear plastic right there so what I do is I just kind of uh, solder the ends of it to um, hold it in place and uh, I'm gonna need a little bit of flux here because uh, I mean there's a little bit of leftover flux on the bottom but you really want to put some flux on the top as well so that you get a nice little solder joint okay so um, it's not really aligned perfectly because you can see the square is not aligned good enough So I get a little flux on there. I'm going to tack down the ends again. Make sure it's aligned perfectly before I do the rest of them. Alright, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to tin my tip with a little bit of solder here and I'm going to push down on the pad so that I can get the um, the solder from below. Well, I'm try still trying to align it a little bit. It's not perfectly aligned yet. really want to make sure it's aligned before you start putting this thing on. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little uh, solder from the on the tip of my soldering iron and uh, try to push down on the pad a little bit so that the solder from the bottom comes up to the top, flows to the top and, and creates a nice solid joint. So just kind of really put a little bit of pressure on it, okay. You want to get a really solid joint. I've had it where it looks like it's fine but the connection's not good and then you start running into some problems. So just clamp it, just use your tweezers to kind of and then put the soldering knife in between the tweezers, push down a little bit, a little bit of pressure. Alright, I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. Basically, you do that with every pad. Yeah, I spend quite a bit of time doing it.
Alright, I'm back. So every pad has been soldered on there. Should be pretty good. I'm going to use some IPA to clean it up a little bit. Clean it up real good. You don't want to really leave a whole lot of flux on there. And then, uh, make sure you cover the cover all these pads. There should be a black tape that you pulled off of it. Just put it back on there after it's been tested. All right, so I'm just going to check some of these pads right here just to make sure that it's uh, this thing works well. So first thing I'm going to do is check all the ground pads. As you can see in ZXW tools, you can kind of hold on. Oh, whoa, that's new right there. I like it. Oh, hold on. What is this all about? Huh? Can't set the saw. That's weird. Before, when I used to expand it, you only used to go about a quarter of the size, but now it's like full size. Anyways, all right, let's check all the ground pads right here. You're going to check on the small screen. So ground, beep. Okay, so those are all good. That's good. One, two, three. And then there's two in the middle. Uh, should be right about here and here. Okay. And then I don't know if I can check everything. I'm just going to check a few of these. So, one, two. So, let's see. Two. Eight, and then it's going to be one of these two, so probably this one. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, that's good. Let's check the one next to that. And it'll be this one. That's good. Uh, skip one. And data line. Data line. Okay, I'm gonna assume everything's pretty good here. Let's we'll check two more. It's gonna be one, two, three. Of these. One, two, okay. I'm gonna assume everything's pretty good. Let's, is there something I can check on the down downside here? I have to go to the other side of the board for that, so I'm not gonna check these. I'm gonna assume everything's good. Maybe this one. Put a little flux on it.
So here, uh, just clean this up, test it, and I'm gonna assume it's gonna work. All right, I'm gonna have to. I left out the audio in the first part of the the video, but uh, so this is it right here. Uh, we are pretty much done with this. All right, all right.